The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Hello and welcome to episode 190 of Video Games to the Max. I'm your host, Sean Garmer, and here with me, as always, Mr. Mark Morrison. Howdy. Well, some of this was sort of a take a break from podcasting after the World Cup ended. Some of it also is because Mark had to have emergency gallbladder surgery. Yep. And the rest is all on you. <laughs> And yeah, this <laughs> then the usual falling asleep, things happening. Oh, and then Mark's internet was being a pain in the ass. We actually have recorded like an hour of yeah. this episode, and Mark's internet decided to just be a total ass that yep. night. And then yeah, so we're trying this again. So here's the here's the deal. We know this SCCC happened. There is going to be a separate episode with SCCC stuff and then news that happened uh, along with that. There is plenty of some... Between both these shows, we'll be talking about plenty of controversies going on. So uh, you'll get your fill of that along with us talking about uh, other things that have happened uh, since the last time uh, we did a show. And we both have been... uh, I've gotten back into playing some games a bit, and uh, you have been playing games as per usual, so yep. anything you want to talk about? Uh, the biggest one is Madden still. <laughs> no, I, oh, you know it. what? I found out because I, you know, we, we were discussing, we were, uh, I was so, I'm like, there's, I can't believe EA actually didn't announce this at all during E3, but there is a long shot. Mode okay. For Madden 19. And yeah, it I bought picks Mad- off right after 18 too. Okay, I wonder if you play the same same guy or something. Or yeah. You no, know, I bought I bought Madden like a month ago, uh, kind of just uh, as kind of as a goof. It was only like four bucks. Uh, but the long shot mode is pretty decent actually. Like you didn't you it was fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the one thing I wanted to play for me just to see how Madden does the story mode. But I've heard like I mean it obviously has a. Uh, I know the guy that plays the dad is like a well-known actor. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I I can't pronounce his first name. Yeah, I can't either. <laughs> he's he's a recognizable dude, and he he was in the first season of Luke Cage, the first villain. <laughs> yeah, I think he was uh, nominated for an Oscar, right? Or not for Luke Cage, but he's been, he's been nominated yeah. for other stuff. Yeah, I think he won for like some Jamaican movie or something. Probably not wrong on that. I. Uh, yeah, I, I know Daniel, when he did the review, that was the one thing that he talked about a lot, that is, it's, like, refreshing to see Madden do a story mode. I, I think um, his name is uh, Mahershala Ali. Yeah. I, so, I rings a bell. That. I hope I'm not portraying that too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but aside from that, uh, the newest thing, well, I've been playing Wreckfest, Dead Cells, House Flipper, uh, Octopath Traveler. And the newest thing is Mega Man X Collection 1 and 2. So how is that? Is uh, Well, first of all, are you a, a big fan of the X games? Yeah, or? I would say I'm a bigger fan than the regular Mega Man games, because those were a little before my time. <laughs> like, right. I, I, I still remember playing them as a kid, but I would say X is kind of the series I actually latched onto the most. Because um, I just like the sense of speed and like the platforming is, I think, just better. Um, so I beat Mega Man X one, uh, and I played my favorite game. It's cause it's X one through X eight. Uh, my favorite game in that franchise is X four, like the first PlayStation one, one, uh, and I cannot beat it worth a goddamn anymore. <laughs> just rusty or, uh, well, the final boss is just really a pain in the ass and 
you only and that one you only get two energy tanks. Like the other ones, you always you used to get four. So, if you have to like play well, um, and the only other game I like in that in the package is probably X Eight. So the two ending games. I I I I've heard X Two and X. Well, I've, I remember X Two and X Three are also pretty good. Like if you're gonna get this thing, just get honestly just get the first first package. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I've heard. It's you get collection one, maybe not collection two. Because collection two, it's X five, X six, seven, and eight, and the only game that's actually worth a damn in that one is X eight. <laughs> so, are the other three just that bad? X five and X six are just more of the same. Like they don't really add much. And I've heard I remember X seven being a terrible game. Cause it, like really, tr- it goes to like try to be like really weirdly 3D, and it just fails completely. Nah. Well... Uh, and it has extras and, you know, other stuff to view and play, and I haven't gotten too much too deep into that. I've been dashing my head against X4, but... <laughs> well, hey, at least you uh, get to relive uh, some memories. Yeah. Uh, I was going to relive the memories when I had a Game Shark. <laughs> a lot of people are sort of doing the same with Sonic Mania Plus. Uh, right now as well. I think it's... Uh, I saw the uh, Sonic team uh, tweeted out that it's the highest rated Sonic game in 25 years. So, uh, so. Since, Sonic, since Sonic 3. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> so, I mean, I liked uh, Sonic 1 on Dreamcast. Sonic uh, Adventure? Yeah, but I, I mean, it's it's not a like See, 9... That that game did an amazing job of snowing people. Because oh yeah. you play, play that first level on the beach, and it's like, oh man, this is great. Like you're running on walls, you're running away from that whale. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks fan- it looked fantastic at the time, and you're like, oh man, this is awesome. And then you're dumped back in the adventure field, and you have no fucking idea what to do. And then you can't really tell where you're supposed to be going. Yeah, there's like some shiny thing that tells you, oh, it's like go to the mystic. Mystic Zone, or, you know, Mystic Adventures Night Field, and it's like, how do I, how do I do that? <laughs> it's like I can't really even see where I'm going. So, and then yeah. yeah, and then like I've always said, Sonic Adventure is like one and a half part of a good game, but the pro like or like it's six games in one, but only one one and a half of those are good. So. It's the other four and a half parts you have to contend with that suck ass. I don't really remember much about two, other than you get a bunch of different characters. So oh, that was Sonic Adventure one because you played as Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, E one hundred two Gamma, and Big the Cat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I never and got past the part where you played with Sonic. So Sonic was good, and Gamma E one hundred two Gamma was passable. Like it wasn't like the greatest thing, but it was at least playable. And the other four, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, hey, yeah, good for good for Sega to finally be like, let's hit that nostalgia bug and uh, make it work. Not, not everything back Vector, man. <laughs> well, we'll and see I, how that goes. Kid Chameleon and Comic Zone. <laughs> Comic Zone, I agree. I don't know about the the other two. But... Comic Zone is a bad game. Like, that... Comic Zone was a bad game that looked and sounded cool, but playing that game was terrible. <laughs> when you were a kid, it wasn't that bad. I yeah, think, exactly. I you haven't gone eight. back and tried to play it now. So yeah, you were eight when you were playing it, so yeah. you know you just let things slide. You didn't know any better. <laughs> yeah, it's because it was that kind of cool, uh, like the whole visual aesthetic of the game and all that it was was nice, and the, the like having the cool like comic cutscenes and all that was yeah helped. Uh, Move it along. Um, uh, the big game but, we've been playing together is Octopath. Yeah, Octopath. I still am not any further than I was when we originally tried to talk about this. Um, yeah, neither am I. I think you picked. You said you picked the hunter, and I picked the merchant. Um, which the, played the whole like knowing that the characters don't really interact with each other, uh, and also that we both bought the game, so I'm not really in a Mood. I'm not like any. Nothing is compelling me to go. Okay, I need to finish this like fast. Yeah. Uh, so I'm kind of just taking my time and. 
Yeah, I was lucky. I bought it for $34 because of a Target price error, so I was happy. <laughs> lucky you. I paid $34 more dollars than you did. <laughs> I've actually uh, been thinking about just trading it in to get Mario Kart 8, but it's probably not a great idea. <laughs> uh, I mean, you'll enjoy, if you're really going to play that a lot, then yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, the online play helps, too. I mean, me and you can play against each other, which would be... That'd be cool. A first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I like it. Like, I enjoy Bravely Default, so the battle system is very good. I enjoy that. Um, the story is... Well, each one of them has their own story, and the Huntress's story is, is fine. The whole her Norse... Or medieval talk that she does. Sometimes I'm sitting there going, what the hell are you saying? I, I don't yeah, know. <laughs> the Traveler just talks normally, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> uh, like, I, I like the fact that, uh, you know, the Huntress has the, the beasts where you can capture beasts. And uh, that makes the, the gameplay even more interesting. Again, it's that whole, like, maybe I just, I shouldn't have uh, read anything or listened to other people discuss it because... Again, the whole knowing that these characters don't really ever... You have a whole party and they don't really interact with each other at all. I don't know if they're like, just setting all these stories up and they're going to have an Octopath Traveler too, which I'd assume they will now and that they they can't even keep the uh, retail version in stock right now. Yeah. The, if, if, it, if they turn this into a marvel of, oh, we had number one as a whole setup and then number two is the grand adventure that you wanted them all to have, then okay, great. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm just kind of like, it's also because there's not a lot of JRPGs on the Switch, so I'm kind of just that, enjoying this one for what it is. And That's kind of the reason I bought it, is, like, there's nothing else on the Switch that's like a big JRPG. I mean, it's not ported over from something else on it like, at this point. Right. And it's weird that, like, Square seems to not, I mean, they put this thing out, right? Octopath. Yeah. But they haven't really supported the Switch, it seems like, that well. Well, I mean, all their well, remasters and stuff, or, I mean, all their, you know, the big, the Final Fantasy games that they put on everything, I don't know that Sony's going to let them put them on Nintendo systems. Uh, they're on Xbox. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, Nintendo would have to want to swallow their pride and go, well, these were not originally on our system. Let's do it. Uh, you know, they haven't even talked about putting 1 through 6 on the Switch yet, which I'd assume that might just come with whenever they decide they want to start putting, you know, NES and Super NES games on there. Well, uh, they'll probably put those stupid cell phone ports on there instead oh that everyone God. seems to hate. <laughs> I, I really hope they don't. I mean, mobile games seem to be doing fine on the Switch, so I don't know. And maybe the Switch, because it's portable itself, it may not look as bad. You don't have to play on your TV, so you don't notice the, the you know, sprite issues and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it just, uh, like, I'm I'm also playing another game that got ported over to the Switch. Uh, East 8, Lacrimosa of Donna. Um, I, my, my computer had problems. Uh, apparently playing the anime intro, but aside from that, it's fine. It uh, it's the, like all the other East games. It's an action RPG, and uh, I haven't. I'm like like in the, within the first two hours, so you're like stuck on this island, and uh, you're having to gather all the people that got like shipwrecked, basically, and uh, that's kind of. All I, you know, I, I couldn't tell you much about the, you know, if the script is better or not. I mean, it seemed like I don't notice any typos, so that's that's a win right there. But, um, you know, I don't play, I don't really, I mean, I don't mind uh, watching anime in Japanese and reading subtitles. But I don't want to read subtitles unless I have to. Like with, uh, it seems like all the Bandai Namco games this year, they have decided not to uh, put them into English at all. Um, maybe uh, aside from Dragon Ball. Uh, the, all the other ones have been, you're going to read subtitles, and we just left them in Japanese. Uh, yeah. But I prefer to just be able to play the game, and if I can 
listen to what they're saying, yeah, it works out better. Well, like Dragon Ball has like a actual production company. Like I mean, they had the Chris right. Sabat and the other Sean Chimmel, whatever his name is. Like and they've been doing Vegeta and Goku for twenty years. So if they didn't have that, people would be pissed. <laughs> well, it's weird because like Sword Art, you know, they dubbed all those animes. Uh, into English, and I'm assuming they'll do it with the third one that's going to come out in the fall. But not uh, somebody just being cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They're they're trying to save money because uh, I'm sure that the Dragon Ball game with having to create their own story and all that uh, wasn't really cheap. And uh, all the other games that have kind of come out from them this year have not. I've only played two of them. I don't I don't know about uh, if they've had any any others between. Little Witch Academia and uh, the Sword Art Fatal Bullet game, uh, those two were not not that great. So uh, yeah. it's not like last year where they had a few more hits. So I mean, they still got. I mean, they delayed Code Vein, and I think that was the game that they were really uh, hoping a lot for. I don't. I'm holding my breath on that My Hero game. Because that looks like a lot could go wrong with it. Uh, that brawler that looks like it's my hero, my hero's version of Smash. Uh, yeah. So you know, I again I love my hero, but I don't know that the game is is gonna do crazy numbers or anything. But you, people are hyped for it, so hopefully uh, that delivers. But yeah, I mean, there's people that really enjoyed East Eight, so I'm hoping that uh, I get to that point. Right now, well, I can't really tell you much, which one way or another. And I was trying to help you, like, troubleshoot it for your PC last night. The Steam reviews are not exactly kind for that game. It sounds like a lot, like a lot of other people are having problems with it, too. Yeah, it's weird because, like, I don't know why... I don't know if they're... The license went up on it or whatever. I'm guessing that's what happened because uh, Xseed used to do all of the East games. Um, and then all of a sudden with 8, NIS America had it all of a sudden. And that was really weird. And so I think the change in publisher, Falcom's still doing the games obviously, but I think the change in publisher might have uh, led to a not so caring about quality. Yeah, um, I remember like yeah. the Disgaea port uh, for PC was kind of screwy. And yeah, when, like it's a JRPG company. I'm not super surprised. <laughs> Are you excited at all about the number one remaster? Or just oh yeah, there? can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you always get like, stuck reviewing those. So. I I, I want to like the idea of Disgaea, like this kind of screwball story, and the actual just very basic strategy game elements are fun, but it's like the layering of like the different color color tiles. Like, just bugs me. The item world really bugs me. Oh, the item world is annoying. Uh, you know, it, that stuff just really gets in the way of, like, just playing those games. Uh, plus number one had the most, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, the the weirdest of the stories, I guess. Well, so. that's one that people, like, latched on to, because I, I think they liked Etna and Laharl, but... yeah. You just uh, think people that never played it before, and you're not one of those that like watches a lot of anime. Just be prepared <laughs> for the some of the tropes, you know, that probably going to happen. Yeah. Unless they tone that down or something, which I, I doubt it, because uh, NIS is usually one that tries to believe in not censoring things. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes when that comes out, but. Yeah, I've also been playing Pool Panic, which is the newest Adult Swim game. I think they took a break for a while and then all of a sudden decided to come back. Uh, it's it has a lot of uh, you know Adult Swim comedy. Uh, the basically like you're a cue ball, you're the cue ball, and you get to walk around, and you do play pool as in the billiards pool, not like you're jumping in a pool, and. You can control the, you know, the direction of the where it's going to hit, and it actually kind of gives you a guide as to where you, so you can sort of learn the angles of 
if I hit it here, he'll actually go in. If I hit the soft touch, it'll help it go in. I might hit it too hard and it's going to bounce off. And then once you get past the tutorial part, you actually go into this like open world area where you get to pick these places you can go and like you can go in like a forest and if you hit like a rock some of the other uh pool balls will come out and then you have to all of a sudden put them in the whatever hole is being created and some of them move around so if you try to hit the orange one per se it'll like skate over like it has rollerblades on and so you have to figure out the strategy of hitting another colored ball into that one to have it go into the the hole and obviously the you always end with hitting the eight ball in but there's like challenges of and all that stuff so i mean they just keep piling layers on which is actually pretty neat and it has like a rick and morty sort of comedy to it which i'm not that's a big fan of rick and that's morty, why so. i didn't that's why i didn't dig it <laughs> yeah uh but i mean i know a lot of people that are so and that might be more your thing it's like I think fifteen dollars, so it's not not too bad. It's on PC and Switch. Maybe easier to stomach on Switch because you can just play a little bit, turn it off. Um, on PC, you know, I did the same. Uh, I'll probably play a little bit more of it and perhaps have a review by next week or something. But it's it's fun. I'm not. It's not like I would say the you know one of those indie hits of the year or whatever, but. It serves its oh, function. The last game I should talk about briefly is Jurassic World. I think Evolution. Yeah, uh, that hit the one million mark. Yeah, uh, it's a really weird uh, park or city or park management sim. <laughs> like the, tr- I had to replay the training mission like four, like the tra- like the first island four or five times before I got it right. <laughs> Dang. It's because that confusing? The, well, there were, like, a few times I just kind of messed up, like, placement of stuff. Like, it's pretty limited, like, where you can actually, like, place big buildings, which I, it, it just bugs me to begin with. But, like, there are three divisions that you can basically do quests for. Like, it's, like, science, security, and entertainment. Uh, and the one park I had going pretty well... Uh, I only had herbivore dinosaurs, and this guy was... that I took a mission for entertainment... And this guy was like, okay, build, like, create a carnivore dinosaur and release him to, like, you know, just release him. And I was thinking, like, I only have one of these buildings that makes dinosaurs. If I release him in, into this pen, he's going to kill all the herbivore dinosaurs. And that's what happened. And then I re- like, so basically, like, I lost that mission, or, you know, I had to restart. And then I later realized, A, I could build fences, which the game didn't tell me to do that. Or B, I could just build another building that releases dinosaurs in like another fenced area. <laughs> yeah, you'd think it would tell you in the tutorial, like make sure you don't, build fences so that. Yeah, or don't mix herbivores and carnivores, because. <laughs> so that that kind of just bugged me initially, like, and then I'm on this. I, I hit the second island, and it's like, okay, here are tropical storms that screw up your island constantly. So it's like, great. I don't want to finish this. <laughs> so you're not enjoying it? No. Um, and it has some good it has some voice acting from the cast, not all, but enough. Jeff Goldblum is in there. I said a lot of people are going to care about. Je- uh Jeff Goldblum, uh BD Wong, he's uh Henry Wu, uh and uh Bryce Dallas Howard, uh Claire, I think. Um but that's about it. <laughs> hey, I mean it's it's weird. I've I've heard a lot of people like are enjoying the game. You are not so much, but I just yeah. think like it's weird. The training mission or the train like the first island, it like they slam you constantly with like new tutorial tips and stuff like that. But they also omit a bunch of stuff <laughs> like. So this is not fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, so there's like no uh, like way to like an index or anything that no, you can there, read to. There, there is, but they don't like 
you know, you're just going to read a bunch of text files. Like that, that kind of gets to be boring also. <laughs> yeah. You kind of want them to show you in video form of, Hey, here's what you do. Yeah. Here's some tips, you or, know, I would say not in video form. You want to show you like in the game, like, right. This is why you build this thing here, or this is how you make a fence. And then this is how you electrify it. Or this is how you actually power the Island. <laughs> I guess they want you to relive Jurassic Park. They want you to be freaked out. Yeah. While this happens. Yeah. Maybe. (laughs) Who knows? Perhaps. But, hey, people are, whether it's because it has the franchise name on it, or whether it's people are enjoying it or or whatnot, um, it's it's sold a million copies now, so. Yeah. uh, Perhaps that means you'll get DLC or an expansion or something. Oh, I mean, yeah, I think they sold the DLC. Uh, maybe, I don't think it's sold the DLC pass, but they can always add more dinosaurs or just, you know, do some more islands, stuff like that. It seems like the, like, one common complaint is, like, there's not there's just not a big island for you to just build your own park on. Like, it's all pretty structured, smaller, you know, areas. Yeah, I could see them, certainly, since that was the point of... Uh, one of the movies of, hey, here's another island. Yeah. Go on, go and uh, build stuff on that too. But yeah, so there is uh, plenty for us to talk about here. Um, so I'm going to start with, technically this is, it came out this week, but this stuff about them actually, what they're going to do with uh, No Man's Sky Next came out a few weeks ago. Uh, obviously, in prep for it finally be getting on Xbox and being on the Xbox One X, uh, No Man's Sky has been... They've been updating it ever since, you know, all the stuff happened with, you know, everybody backlashing against the game of them showing stuff that didn't actually show up in the game. I remember having you and Daniel both on. You guys sort of enjoyed it for what it was, regardless. Uh, Now, they have added uh, several things uh, to it, including enough to be able to just call it No Man's Sky Next now. And uh, along with it, they're going to have weekly updates. Uh, They're going to have uh, an update that they they call the, the Galactic Atlas which is, you know, displays in-game events on a map, and, and now there's multiplayer. Uh, there's a lot of different things that they've uh, added in here. Base building. Does any of this make you want to go back and play it at all? Not really. Uh, I think you have to, like, actually restart the game, or restart your character to, like, make your, you know, create a new character and, like, customize it to be like a robot or alien or human or whatever i mean i give them props for you know keep plugging away at it because it's been three years or at least two um but i i think it's just time has passed <laughs> you don't think it's i mean obviously I mean, people, it's gonna get buzz this week yeah, pe- because people, it came out you know, seem excited for it but then you know in a week of week or two they'll die again <laughs> yeah i wouldn't be surprised I, I think obviously people that are buying it now are going to want to do anything to make it last uh i do wonder if the two sides are going to clash a little bit as far as oh well here's the multiplayer people that are coming in to play multiplayer how is that going to clash with the people that like to just go around planets and look at stuff you know i think i'm I'm pretty sure you can put we can probably opt out of the multiplayer or just you know say flag yourself for like PVE or something. <laughs> I mean, there'll be people that are going to enjoy the base building. I don't know how deep it is, uh, but you know that's not for everybody, as we've yeah. seen with your not love of Fallout Shelter <laughs> or or any of the building in Fallout Four. So. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, hopefully for Sean Murray, uh, this goes well so that he can feel a little bit of redemption for all the crap that happened before. Uh, even though some of that's on Sony, but 
you know. Yeah. They are going to... I mean, they, they they advertised the hell out of it, and it didn't work. But Well, they advertised not... the crap out of it because it was it, an exclusive. and It was at it, least an inventive idea, and it had some neat ideas to it. And hasn't been a disaster like most of Microsoft's exclusives this generation cycle. <laughs> yeah, just it's sometimes where I think, if anything, I think developers learned why sometimes you have to have a filter. Yeah, uh, on what you say. Cause sometimes you say too much, you get two people, you give people too big of an idea of what a game is. It's not that people hate it. So look, look for this conversation when Fallout Shelter hit or when Fallout 76 hits yeah that's going to be interesting too because uh, you know I the think... beta is like a month before the game comes out now um, and it's weird like a game like that right I mean obviously you have to wonder if Bethesda's being real careful about well we don't want to deter people from not buying it so we still need to make sure they pre-order and then they can play. Doesn't mean they can't cancel the pre-order after they play, but I still find it weird that you wouldn't decide to have an open beta for something like that where you're completely changing what the franchise is. And you could probably hook people that were on the fence at first if you made it open. Yeah, but then also if people don't like it, you could probably turn a lot of people off. <laughs> Yeah, I just because uh, the beta also is pretty close. Like, you, like it's getting sent. Like you, you have to pre-order the game to get into the beta, but you're not guaranteed a spot. So, yeah, it's only it's like, certain people will. I mean, obviously, the who's who of websites will get it. They will get to give you their opinion, and obviously, you'll get to take that opinion for what it's worth. Um, are you set one way or the other on whether you're getting I'm, it or? No, I'm not. I'm not going to get it. I I like single player games. <laughs> yeah, and if I, I agree I, with you. if I don't like the base building in Fallout Four, I'm really not going to like the base building in Fallout Seventy Six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then not to mention, you know, you have to rely on other people to yeah really do a lot in that game. So, like, I don't like Rust, and I don't like you know those types of games. Kind of period. If I can play them solo, that's one thing. Like that's kind of why I like. Uh, Oh, what is it? Uh, the Long Dark, the Canadian like frozen simulator game, because you can just play it by yourself. <laughs> yeah. So and it, and it won't. Uh, I love that Todd Howard has been no mincemeat about the whole. It's not going to have crossplay either because Sony, you know. Yeah. Their thing right now that uh, even though Sean Layden says that they're doing something about it, they're trying to figure out. What's best for them? Um, I mean, hey, Microsoft did it last generation. Like, Sony doesn't need to. <laughs> I feel like they're eventually going to open it, though. I feel like the walled garden thing is old at this point. Like, uh, people are going to buy Sony systems because there's only certain games you can get on Sony systems, and that's going to be the case. Uh, whether you have crossplay or not. Like Spider-Man, you're only going to play it on PS4. Um, I mean, I don't know if it'll come to PC eventually or not or whatever, but... No. Like, just... Th that's not going to change, so... Having cross-play for Fortnite is not going to make people... Go buy an Xbox One all of a sudden. Like, you know... I, I think it'll make it to where you feel more inclusive with that system... Um, I don't know if they just want to wait till PS5 to open the floodgates for that, or for what it is. But I feel like eventually they're going to cave uh, if it be, keeps being a, an issue. But like you said, they don't have. You can make all the jokes you want, right? Nintendo and Microsoft can do all the, hey, we're best buddies over here, and and make fun of Sony. But at the end of the day, Sony won the war, so yeah, you know. And Xbox went out last year, last generation cycle, and they uh, they basically shot on like defiance crossplay with PS3. So, yep. And Microsoft has the better infrastructure with online, so they didn't have an excuse like you know Sony could have made for. Well, we did have the PSN hack, so we're a little worried about 
it happening again. Microsoft yeah. really didn't have that issue, so right. You know, it. We'll see how it goes with the uh, the next uh, the next show. We'll talk about if what Microsoft is doing could help or hurt them uh, in the long run. What their plans are for the Scarlet at least initially. And if it could be a lot like what happened with the Xbox One at first, but we'll get to that uh, in the next show. But Blizzard has made a change of their own to to help uh, make it easier for people to get into World of Warcraft. Of course, with Battle of Azeroth only a few weeks away now, August 14th, they've finally ended the, I guess you could call it the archaic battle chest thing, where... You had to go buy the battle chest to get all the versions previous to whatever expansion it was. Um, I had to do that when I got into my little thing of wanting to play World of Warcraft. I had to buy the battle chest at Walmart. cost me 20 bucks, And then I bought the Mr. Pandaria expansion. Uh, played as a panda for a while. I bought the... Uh, is it the Draenor? World of Draenor thing? Yeah, that was a nice one, I think. And then I think I played that for a little bit, and I was like, yep, I'm done with this. <laughs> but I paid 50 bucks for that thing. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Blizzard got my money. But uh, it's, it's, this was also when I was, like, hardcore into Hearthstone, so I got pretty big into the lore and thought, well, why not play WoW? I've never done it before. I'm just glad. I've been playing WoW, like, off and on. Uh, and they hit their, like pre-patch a few weeks ago which broke some stuff but the one thing it didn't like it took away uh world pvp which i'm like incredibly happy for <laughs> yeah and i'm sure so, you are excited to be able to go in the world and i have to worry about getting teabagged <laughs> yeah i'm not getting jumped by some undead rogue every 10 every 10 minutes or i'm going to like the big town like and legion the, uh the current expansion like there are I think like six areas and each area had like its own big town. And a few of those towns, if you try to fly into it, you're going to get jumped immediately. Oh, damn. And like the minute you, the second you land, you, you're dead. And they just take over the town for, you know, hours on end. So I, I, I just wonder what those people are doing now. Like, do they actually have to get a life now or what are they, you know, <laughs> Oh, maybe they don't play because they they can't be bullies online or yeah, I don't know. you know maybe they just it's it's not a or they do play and they just go oh well all right we'll have to actually you know play PVE and I uh, has there been a lot of backlash to people to like they're not being PVP servers anymore. Or? No, it seems it, most of most of it is uh, the backlash, like how the they did like another item squish or like another like because items were getting like way too powerful. Um, so they scale like instead of having you know dealing like millions of damage and you know, just dealing like ten thousand or something, but it's had the knock on effect of like some bosses don't like didn't get the message or they didn't program it correctly. So they they have to like fix some stuff. Like I was de- like the min- like the day the patch launched like two weeks ago. I think I played maybe even last week. I think or, no two weeks ago. I uh, you know I played and like I tried to fi- face this boss. I've killed you know dozens of times, no problem whatsoever. And like I was I barely won against it that time. It's like it's like I'm I'm. 30 levels above you, dude. Like, I should be winning this, no problem. But he, he was kind of kicking my ass for a little bit. <laughs> well, at least uh, you can get... Uh, or, or is there something from the new expansion that you're excited for? Or? Just new content. Like, uh, looks fun. I played a little of it in the beta. Look, this seemed fun. Buggy at the time, but fun. Uh, yeah, just new area to explore. And, like, that's kind of all I care about. Well, we'll see how... Uh, I'm sure the servers will be ridiculous uh, at first, like they usually are, and then yeah, hopefully it uh, continues the trend of having uh, good expansions for, for a while, and I'm sure we'll see the subscriber base jump and, and yeah, all that. Like, but 
for at least yeah. one month, and that'll go away again. <laughs> yeah, but at least now you only got to pay your twelve ninety nine. You automatically get jumped up to the current version, and then you just buy Battles of Azeroth, Battle for Azeroth when it uh, comes out. So yeah, good for uh, Blizzard on that. And another good thing for Blizzard is, I mean, this is kind of old now because they they're already showing it on ESPN uh, and ABC. But uh, Dizzy and ABC have signed a multi year deal with Blizzard to broadcast Overwatch League on TV. So it's still going to be on Twitch if you're one of those that. You know, doesn't uh, have cable. Like, I, I don't have cable. Uh, I, I usually only get cable when, like, football season's on. And then I turn it off again after that. So, uh, well, technically I have the limited basic whatever with Comcast. But I go yeah. up a tier or, or get PSVU or whatever. But PSVU's starting to get ridiculous. That now it's, like, 50 bucks for the... Uh, yeah, now it's, like, the same price as cable. So it's, like, yeah. why... Now I'm sitting here wondering if it's cheaper for me to go get my DVR back and go up a tier. But then, like, they put ESPN and NFL Network on, like, the third tier or whatever. And I'm like, I'm not paying that. that that'll make it go over, like, 200 something dollars. Like, screw that. Yeah. Uh, now, especially because you, you have to have – I cannot knock the – um. if I take the unlimited data off, if I try to put it back on again, it jumps up to $65 a month. I'm like – Nope, that's never coming off. Yeah. <laughs> so, because I'm grandfathered in at the 50s, so I'm just... Yeah, so am I. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, this is cool. This is cool for Overwatch League. I mean, ESPN's been showing, uh, you know, the, the esports stuff for a while. It's not new. Uh, but they have an official deal now. Of course, this helps with their ESPN Plus and, and all that, too, so... You know, whenever Disney gets their thing going, uh, that'll help with that too. So, you know, uh, good good for them uh, on that front. Uh, speaking of shows, uh, Halo finally got greenlit by Showtime. Uh, so I'm excited for this Halo getting a TV series. Can't wait to go see Locke in action once again, huh? Oh, God, <laughs> fuck Locke. Uh, <laughs> This is going to apparently not have anything to do with the games. It's going to be a separate story. Um, so that's that can either be good or bad. Um, sometimes when you don't have the base to go off of, it gives you creative freedom to kind of come up with your own thing, and it's good. Sometimes when you don't have uh, that sort of thing to go from or story you're trying to tell, it can also give you like too much, and you get away from what the subject material is this does have uh steven spielberg involved so and he's he's a big halo fan i guess my question is kind of like this what do you do with halo like do you do master chief or do you just because that's what the other halo thing like the lock thing was supposed to like you can't have the master chief running around because it's gonna be too goofy looking honestly or just too expensive uh i think the point is to not have at least not at first, not have Master Chief. Like, do you have a bunch of other Spartans, or... I don't, I don't know if they're going to try to come up with, like, somebody that's, like, adjacent to Master Chief, and... They'll have uh, the uh, whiny Marine David Cross from Halo 2. That could, that could happen. Uh, you know, just to set up the world in Season 1 and see how it gets taken. Like, Showtime apparently... They want to take this up to HBO levels with with Halo. Like this is the show that they're gonna try to show everybody that hey, we can flex our muscle with uh, sets and and everything I, else. So I, that's bad. Like Showtime has made some good shows, but they are not, and I don't think ever will be on the level of HBO. <laughs> No, they won't, but I don't think they've ever tried to be on that scale either. Like, you know, Shameless is great, but it's, you know, it's not it's not trying to be uh, Game of Thrones or, or Westworld or whatever. It's I think, like, uh, what was it? Uh, Penny Dreadful was supposed to be like that to an extent. I enjoy Penny Dreadful, too. Like, that was supposed to be, like, the, I, I think the, like, marquee drama, like, got, you know, gothic horror. And I liked it a lot. I don't like the season three that much, but I, you know I liked it generally speaking. But it had no ratings, and 
I mean, it was also at a time before, like, horror had become what it is now, where you're actually making stuff. It came out five years, like, three years ago or four years ago. Yeah, but, like, all of a sudden, you know, once, like, you know, the It remake or whatever has really put, like, horror back into it, along with, like, American Horror Story of, like, making horror kind of cool again. So, I think maybe that was, like, a little bit too much in the weird direction, and it was for a certain niche audience, and, and I don't know. It, I liked it, too, but I could see how it can, like, turn off some people, you know? Yeah. Um, not my thing with Halo is that, like, it has a deep world, but the characters don't, you don't really get to know much about them. So they're really going to have to work on that. Um, again, well, like I... the, sh- the world that inhabits is cool. Like, um, there's a lot of villains for them to mess with and stuff like that. It's just like the protagonist has never been something that you're like, Oh my God, I'm just so hooked on what's happening to master chief right now. You know, it's kind of like the Star Wars problem to an extent. Like, Star Wars is a cool universe, but you know, I don't need to see a film about how Han met how Han met the Wookiee or how they got the Death Star plans. Like, uh, do other I will stuff. still <laughs> I will still fight with you in that at least Rogue One was well made and it had a purpose. Film, like necessarily the filmmaking, except for like the trailer shit, but. <laughs> Like solo, I could have just—I enjoyed the movie. I could, it could have not existed, and everybody would have been fine. So. Yeah, yeah, we'll just have to see. Like, if they can get it past the whole, okay, it's cool that Halo's on TV, and make it have substance, then maybe they'll have something. But again, like I... what I've enjoyed most from Showtime is Shameless. I like Penny Dreadful because I I like those characters, like you know the the story behind those characters, whatever. But like, um, the I'm Dying Up Here, which is one of their new comedy series, like, stuff like that is what I've enjoyed from Showtime. I'm not looking for them to try to be HBO. I like their, uh, they did a show a few years ago called Masters of Sex, so it was pretty decent. Um, yeah, that was that's good, That's about too. it. <laughs> oh, I like Dexter when it was on. It got way long in the tooth, but... I like, uh... I like Dead Like Me, but that was, like, 2002. Like, that was one of their first shows. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, when having premium channels was, like, a dream. Well, no, my dad had them, but at that point, the premium channels were for something else. Uh, yeah. But, uh, so, Like, you know. I, yeah, I think Dexter, that, that might have been it. Like, that's probably their biggest thing. Yeah, it is. And it I ran, mean, like you said, it ran well, way too and, long. Like, but... Twin Peaks, when that was... Yeah, but that, they didn't yeah. start the like, so. Yeah, they st- it was on ABC, and then the, um, you know, the third season got on Showtime, but. Yeah. You know, uh, so yeah, you know, uh, we'll we'll see. They'll have to come out with more information about it. But as a Halo fan, I'm excited. Am I sitting here thinking it's going to revolutionize what Halo is? I don't think so. And... Hopefully, 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 this leads to an Earthworm Jim real life TV show. <laughs> That would be interesting <laughs> how they would pull that up. Uh, something that's kind of interesting to me is, you know, as much as we've seen with Nintendo has sort of gone the other way with the Switch where they're letting a lot of different games come out. I mean, now all of a sudden they've gone another different direction. We're starting to see sort of, uh, we're almost going into the porn direction with some of the stuff that's on the Switch now, but... Interesting that uh, Daisuke Sato says that he doesn't think the Yakuza games are the ideal platform for the Switch. That it's more likely that you'll see Yakuza games on the Xbox One before you see them on the Switch, considering, you know, Nintendo's a Japanese company. Well, you know. There's two reasons. One, the power differential between, you know, a PS4 and Xbox versus a Switch. Like. That's not insignificant. <laughs> yeah, but you could still, like, give them Kiwami 1 or something like that. You know, just to see what the what the audience for that is like. And the second thing is, is I think 
Well, it's not official, but Yakuza has always been primarily a Sony uh, uh, franchise. It's not necessarily, like, locked in, but, you know, when you think Yakuza, you think you think PlayStation. And I think, right. you, you, I think Yakuza 1 did come out on the Wii U, uh, like, years ago, and it didn't sell for shit. So, it's not surprising. Like, that's right, another... but that was before, like, Yakuza 0, actually, any people actually over here in the West care about Yakuza. Yeah. So, um... I remember those games showing up as, like, free for PS Plus. I'd get them, but I'd be like, okay, this is a whatever. You know, I don't play the GTA games, so why do I care about playing this either? And then when I played Zero, I was like, oh, this is way different than, you know, GTA. And, well, you know. I mean, also, there just aren't that many open world games in the Switch right now anyway. No, there's not. But I, I think the thing that kind of gets people, too, is, like, Sega's usually all about let's let's do stuff with nintendo right so it's kind of yeah, weird but, that but nintendo still has it always has a kind of kitty image yeah <laughs> that's true i mean that's what he's getting at is that it's yeah. for a different kind of audience the family audience would like, they you, take that like do you think even if they even if they ported uh like Yakuza Kiwami to the you know switch or Yakuza zero they're not going to have, like, the porn, like, phone sex games or anything like that in there. Well, I mean, they're letting them have sort of porn on the Switch itself right now, so I don't know. And maybe they yeah, won't but touch those, it. Those, those are small, smaller, you know, indie games or, you know, online game, games that no one cares about. <laughs> well, well, for one, I mean, at this point, other than, like, you know, whoever has a Switch only... Whoever bought Kiwami's bought it already. So yeah. would there really be a point to bringing it over? I think it would have to be like just saying, okay, Yakuza, whatever it is, whether it's Kiwami 2, let's say it was Kiwami 2, which obviously right now it's way too late for that to happen. But let's say the Switch version is going to come out like two weeks to a month after the PS4 version. I think that's a better test to see if somebody would... Because people are all about, you know, we, we see it all the time, not not just with indie games, but, you know, Octopath Traveler, other games of like, oh, it came out on the Switch, oh, crap, wow, this thing sold a heck of a lot. Yeah. You know? So, it's out there for them to test it, but they'll have to work and, hard. And it's, and I think it's too, too big a risk. Like, even, you know, think about how much you have to, you have to scale down that engine... And the graphics to run the Switch. Yeah, even uh, did that Shining game come out on the Switch? I think, it, I think it did. Uh, yeah, I think it to... did actually. Well, because it was originally like a PS3 game, so um, it should be able to run on that as as my computer is not having me with the. Um... Yes, it did come out on the Switch. It came out okay. on all systems. So, yeah, but it was originally a PS3 game that they ported it over and remastered or whatever. So, yeah, that makes sense. That won't have a problem running. But something like Yakuza, where, like you said, they would have to really tone it down. Whereas on the Xbox One X, you could really see, you know, what, you know, some of the things that makes that game stand out. You won't get to see that that much on the Switch. So, yeah, know. I mean, it's probably not. I mean, they could port probably pretty easily Yakuza to the Xbox One, but why? <laughs> like, they're not going to sell in Japan, and no. everyone who cares about Yakuza over here already has a PS4 and already bought it either right. on the PS4 or the, the PC, so... Mm. Yep. I, I don't know. Just, if they, I, I think he was saying in the future past Kiwami 2 and whatever of well, maybe we will do PS4 and Xbox One eventually, but not uh, not on the Switch. Yeah. So, uh, in more movie news, uh, we talked about uh, James Marsden playing Sonic in the live-action Sonic movie. Well, his villain counterpart will be played by Jim Carrey. 
Jim Carrey is going to play Dr. Eggman. Dr. Robotnik. Wow. That's, nope. I didn't think uh, that, that that's a surprise to me. I, I, Jim Carrey would not have been the first person I would have thought of. The only good person is Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I'm not really kidding. Like, Well, yeah. I mean, he makes a lot of sense. Like, this... I, Jim... The, the sad part is, is like I, I like Jim Carrey as an actor, uh, but his career in the past like ten years, fifteen years, has been garbage. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. he's been, like what's the last thing you saw, you've seen him in that you let you know that you actually saw, like in a theater? <laughs> uh, Eternal Sunshine. Yeah, that um, was that was two thousand four. I think Show. that was ninety seven. Grinch. <laughs> Because it was Christmas and my dad loves to he he has to make us see every freaking Christmas movie. Uh, Grinch was probably the last one that I actually went. Yeah, that was two thousand. Saw so that was eighteen years ago. <laughs> um, well, so I guess Sunshine would have been the last one then. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because I really can't he, he, remember. Uh, I've heard he was pretty good in Kick Ass too. I didn't see that, and I won't. But. Uh, he was like one of the standout things of that, but aside from that, like his career, like oh, there was another movie that he was in recently. Dumb and Dumber Two. Well, not that. I I don't know. I just the Dumb and Dumber was past my time, and I didn't care that much about it. Well, they made so. it like twenty twenty three years after the fact, so it's like no wonder it bombed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like. There's a point to you don't need to remaster or redo everything. Like, uh, there's always diminishing returns with that. So, you know, yeah. I, but he, 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 he did uh, the Lemony Snickets, right? Yeah, he did the first one, and that didn't do too well. So that's why they're on Netflix now with uh, Neil Patrick Harris. Which that one's actually doing really well, and people seem to really enjoy it. So. Probably because like he, they're going more towards the source material with that. He's in a bunch of, like, uh, drama, like, suspense films. Like, the number 23, and he, he just made a new one called Dark Crimes. And I was like, no, we want you ta- you want, we want me talking out of your ass. That's what you're good for. That's all you're good for. Get back to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, he's doing a TV series, apparently. As well. Oh yeah, the uh, like him is like it's like death to Smoochie Part Two or something. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. I guess I guess that's what that yeah, is. Yeah, he, he plays like a guy. He, he basically plays like Mister Rogers, like on TV, but then his home life is a disaster. Yeah, um, I feel like I, I saw. I love you, Philip Morris, and I can't tell you one damn thing about it. <laughs> yeah, it was him and Ewan McGregor as, like, I think Jim Carrey was, like, in love with Ewan McGregor's character, like, stalking him to an extent and kept yeah. breaking into jail or something. Uh, Fun with Dick and Jane was fine. I think that was the last, like, live-action thing that he was in that but, I thought I mean, was... the original point stands, like, he hasn't done a ton in the past, you know, ten years. <laughs> Nope. That's been good. <laughs> yeah, or that's been like mem- you know memorable. Like you're going, oh well, that was another big performance from him, or yeah, or whatever you know. So, I mean, to be fair, he's a lot of actors have done this. <laughs> yeah, he's it, you know not every actor gets to be Meryl Streep. So, you know, or even like a Bruce Willis or Samuel Jackson, they get to keep doing roles that even Bruce Willis has gone down, but oh, yeah. you're still sort of paying more attention to what he does than say Jim Carrey. Cause I think Bruce Willis also had like Looper that, you know, kicked ass he, and yeah, he made one good movie. So people yeah. were like, eh, he's, if he cares, he's, he's still good. But the problem is he doesn't care for. Yeah. 90, I, I mean, five, those, so. um, was it the red, was it red? I thought yeah. the movies were fine. Like, I enjoyed them for what they were. Like, you know, uh, I didn't expect much out of them. And for the ensemble cast they had, I thought they, they worked pretty well. But, uh, 
you know, I'm I'm also like totally out of the movie loop. Like the only things I go see at the movie theater are like the Marvel films, Star Wars, and you know some other things. So yep, you know, I'm not like let me go see every freaking thing that comes out. Uh, so I mean, if they want to make a Sonic movie, fine, but. I, I Sonic just Team apparently has nothing to do with this either, so... Oh, that meant good sign of quality right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it could be decent, but that's the problem, right? Like, they couldn't make Tomb Raider into a good movie. Um, and yeah, they really the, didn't have to do a whole lot with that either uh, to make it good. Uh, like the, be- the best it can do is Mortal Kombat from 1995, 90- and then... The Castlevania cartoon, and the reason that's good is it's a fucking cartoon. Well, yeah, exactly. It's an anime that is, you know, people are more and more English companies are getting into that, and they're they're doing well. So it's it's a different medium than uh, doing a live action movie. Is like, uh, I, I mean, my my only hope is probably that Netflix Witcher show, and that's really dependent on the cast. It's also Netflix, like. You know, like, I have more trust in whatever Netflix is going to do. I mean, not, not granted, like, Bright sucked. But, you know... Yeah, all of their movies are terrible, Their movies actually, notwithstanding. But... <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not... I don't blame them for trying to do something with Adam Sandler. I mean... Or, like, that Will Smith movie. Yeah, uh The Bright movie. No, oh, no, the... I, oh, yeah, sorry. I was thinking of Mute, the Duncan Jones thing. Yeah, like, that, was... that too. Oh, Which man. I don't know why Bright got a second, or got a sequel, but whatever Netflix. You guys... so a lot of people watched it because they heard it was terrible. So it's kind of yeah. like more, you know, morbid watching, really. Yeah, that's uh, you know, I but mean, that's the thing. Netflix has so many hits with their TV shows that they can fail with these movies, and it doesn't really matter. Why do you think Netflix is getting rid of their ratings? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, well, to be, they still don't make really a profit, but it doesn't matter because. They have such a big subscriber base that they're good. But, you know, again, it's like video game movies. It's the same thing we'll talk about with, uh, you know, they had the guy that he, it's not been greenlit, but they have a guy, the guy that's going to be the director for the Metal Gear movie. Oh, yeah. Jordan Volt Roberts or whatever and his name is. He, He's been talking about that for like years. And I'm yeah. like, apparently Kojima totally is down with it. Yeah, like, they're like yeah. friends, which is fine. I mean, but, you know, you're hanging out with Kojima at, like a, you know, a cafe. That's not you directing a movie. Like, get right. off your ass and do, do it. Well, Konami also says a yes, which, that's another whole can of worms. You know. They want what, money. Of course they'll say what, yes. Which, depending <laughs> on, you know, who you talk to, they're trying to get back into games or they're not. So, you know, <laughs> who knows with that. But, um... Before we get into fully into the entertainment stuff for this week, Nintendo made waves by making a statement of they want at least 20 to 30 indie games coming out a week on the Switch. Uh, for the most part, the developers took this positively um, because basically, you know, the iOS stores like that. Steam is even worse. It's like 150 games come out a week on that thing. Um, and you don't have no, you have no idea how, you know, how to curate that. I mean, they did a good job of curating it, right? They make it a personal page for you based on what you buy, which that isn't always great because then you go to the store and you still don't know what the hell came out. Um, and then you have the, uh, the way that the 3DS does it where they kind of just tell you what's new based on how big it is or. Whatever, which is also fine. Nintendo doesn't have a curation system at all for their uh, for the Switch eShop. You just go in there and go to recent releases, and it shows you everything. And you're like, oh my god, okay, this is a lot of crap. Or well, not necessarily crap, but it's like this is a lot of stuff to parse through. And they don't even do the Sony thing where not all the games have video, so yeah. you have to go on YouTube which is not on the Switch, so you have to go outside of your Switch to go on YouTube to do it, watch a trailer to see if this is worth something. Go see if it's not a mobile port or a game that came out, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. Not that, you know, there, there are there are games that came out 10 years that are really good. I'm not saying that there's not. I'm just making a point that, you know, Switch has a lot of ports. But 
still, I mean, again, like, I, in principle, I don't think this is bad, but I do think that this makes it even harder for people to realize, like, what indie games are actually good that I need to play and which ones are kind of like, just because this is $7 doesn't mean that I need to buy it. You know what? I don't know, do you have a, having a Switch, do you have a feeling either way of, do you think this is too much, or? Uh, might be. Like, I, like, it's a nice idea, but, I mean, look what was coming out for the Wii and Wii U. Like, a bunch, you know, a bunch of shovelware crap. Like, they should, if they want 30 to 35 indie titles a week, they should be good, or they should be new, not just... Well, this came out on Steam four years ago, and this already came out on PS4 and, you know, Xbox, so here it is on Switch. Like, Yeah, at like, least are, make uh, a little video to show, here's like, are we gonna the get, new stuff. Are we going to get, like, Torchlight on the, you know, on the Switch, even though the company doesn't exist anymore? <laughs> that could happen, you know. The way that it's going, maybe they'll just be like, hey, let's put it on here, see if people buy it. Yeah. Which you probably would. No, no other dungeon, dungeon crawler on the Switch, so why not? Yeah. Um, you know, it's... I don't think it's bad. I just, I wonder if it's going to make it even more cluttered. And You know, for us that we pay attention to this stuff, it's fine. But for people that, like, don't and just get on there and go, oh, I want to buy something new, and like, well, okay. Oh, yeah. there's Even I'm like that, like... Navigating the, I think, I mean, I don't know the Xbox One store that at all, honestly, but between the Switch, Steam, and PS4, I think Switch is the worst. Yeah, I would agree, because at least Steam has the whole, here's what you might like based on what you bought for. Yeah. Thing. And mo- most, most Steam games at least have a video of, right. you know, the game. It might yeah. be misleading, but if they have a video... <laughs> yeah, a lot of the Nintendo ones don't. And it's like, okay, I'm just watching a bunch of screens. I kind of get what this game is, but... You know, doesn't explain a lot to me. Yeah. Huh? Hopefully they figure it out. Maybe with the, uh... Once you start paying for the online service, they'll... They'll invest some money in, in curating yeah. their store. That'll happen. <laughs> Uh, so, officially, Time Warner and AT&T, even though there is somebody trying to, the court is now trying to repeal that, uh, the Time Warner and AT&T merger, but right now, as it stands, the merger went through, and that means that, uh, as much as Sean Oliver likes to make jokes about AT&T, they are now the parent company of HBO, and so, uh, the media chief came out. I think it was like a week or during this this week period and said that their HBO is going to have to change some of what they do uh saying that he wants more hours of engagement uh basically it's saying that they don't want HBO to they want HBO to be more than just the whole Sundays at 9 thing. Yeah, cuz they have weekend programming and I think uh, John Oliver is like Friday night, and that's about it. Oh, uh, John Oliver's on Sunday night. Oh, okay. So, John Oliver comes on after the the big shows oh. uh, to kind of end their whole slot. But, actually... But also, H- like, primarily HBO is still a movie, you know, channel. Like, I mean, honestly, they should... Well, they, they, they have should... shows, but they, they parse them out to where... One basically starts when the other one's ending. Honestly, like so. I think HBO should just split, kind of split, sw- split them up. Like, have one channel be for their shows, new, like new and old, and then one channel be. Well, I mean, that's what HBO Two is essentially, like all our old, all the movies. Right. Like show, you know, show like The Wire and Oz and, uh, you know, all their old shows, like Sopranos. I mean, why not? Yeah, I mean, you have it. Um, you have it there. I I agree with you to that extent, but also the HBO head came out after this and said that, no, they're not going to change direction at all. So yeah. they're playing semantics with uh, the Time Warner people right now. I, you know, I don't know what's going to wind up 
it, apparently AT&T is supposedly happy with what they do. I mean, how can you not be happy with what HBO does? I mean, they have some of the biggest shows on freaking all of TV, regardless of how much Netflix puts out there. Netflix won the Emmy nominations because they put so much crap out there that, God, they got to win something. So, yeah. you know, um, even though it's still hilarious that Hulu beat them to the punch on the whole winning the best drama or comedy or whatever. But, um, and now I'm really wanting to watch uh, Castle Rock because I'm a huge Stephen yeah, King person. Watched, and that looks awesome. I watched, watched the first episode, like right when you messaged me. <laughs> Is it really good? It's it's slow, but good. Okay, I have to watch that. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, it, it's... HBO doesn't need to change anything what they're doing. They're, they have a formula. I don't know. Obviously, things are going to get a little... They'll have to think about things once, you know, Game of Thrones officially goes off the air. But I'm but sure worry, they'll they come got, up with some other hit shows. So. They, got four, they got four prequels waiting in the wings. <laughs> Well, they got one that's greenlit. The other ones are kind of on hold until they actually get this one off the ground. So, we'll did you see, see the uh, Westworld Westworld comment today? Yeah, we'll we'll talk about on that on the, the okay. next show. But that that was interesting, that's to say the least. Um, and uh, speaking of uh, big deals, the uh, Disney won the antitrust lawsuit to have that one go through. Comcast also said that they were no longer going to pursue the deal, but now Fox, I guess hoping that maybe uh, they'll get the same thing that's happening with the Time Warner AT&T deal, that if they hold this off long enough, somebody will try to repeal it. Well, a Fox shareholder filed a lawsuit in Delaware uh, trying to get this uh, deal to not go through. Um, I feel like that's just going to fall on deaf ears. They've done so much to try to make this go through. Um, there's legal semantics in here that I'm not going to try to think yeah. that I understand. Uh, I feel like this is just eventually it's, that's going to get thrown out. This is going to happen, and whoever at Fox that doesn't like it is going to have to just deal with it. Yep. Um, Fox also, I think, signed WWE in part of the whole this deal is happening. So and there also there's a lot of people at Fox that are waiting for this deal to happen so they can keep making other deals. So a lot is riding on this, and I think at this point they're just Disney's gonna flex the muscle and just be like, okay, you can keep delaying this all you want to. It's happening. Just shut up and and deal with it. Yeah. Uh so so that it's good to know that that is. Uh, pretty much a done deal uh, at this point. Nickelodeon keeps bringing back more of their old cartoon shows. Uh, they did the Hey Arnold movie. Uh, R- Rocco's Modern Life is getting a movie. Rugrats is not only getting a live action movie, they're getting a whole revival. 26 episodes. And That the was the producers... worst of a bunch. <laughs> I liked my backs when I was a kid. Like I, I really hated it as a kid. I thought I I thought the art style was really weird, and I just disliked all the characters. Um, I just it got old for me after a while. Like, um, I was always more of a Doug person than yeah. Bring that Doug. back. Everyone likes uh, Doug. Well, Disney owns that one, so Disney would have yeah. to. Yeah, they could do it for their network thing, I guess if they want to. But uh, all the creators are executive producers, so. I mean, I don't know what else they've been doing this whole time, but, uh, you know, and it's, it's cool and all that this is happening. I don't know that kids that are out there right now really need this, but do you, Nickelodeon? Well, uh, you got to one, like, Nickelodeon's most popular show is, like, Spongebob. Um, what other show do they have going? <laughs> uh, the Ninja Turtles are still there, right? Uh, no, well, they ended that, like, the recent show, and they were making the new one, like, the mystical one, which looks terrible, I think. And also, the problem with the Turtles was, like, they never really got behind that show correctly, so, like, the scheduling of that show became insane. They kept moving it around? Well, they kept, like, breaking, like, they'd show, like, two new episodes, and then wait two months, and then show, two new, like, three new episodes, and then wait another two months, and, like... 
I think between like seasons like maybe three and four, there was like a good year where they didn't show any new episodes. <laughs> Jesus, that's one way to turn people off pretty quick. Yeah, like Especially me and a friend kids of... like they don't have that. Oh kind of yeah, patience. That, that was a problem. I think Young Justice ran into also like that. Uh, it was, I mean, really popular DC show on like Cartoon Network, but like like Cartoon Network didn't get behind it correctly, so they kept moving it around and like screwing up the uh, scheduling. So what do you so what do you expect? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the young folks do not have that. They're gonna move on and watch something else. You know, I don't know how well it's gonna do on the DC network thing, but we'll see. Get that. I thought originally it was supposed to be on Netflix, or is it still not? No, it's or... gonna get it's gonna get put on that DC network. Okay, because I thought Netflix was the one who originally brought it back. <laughs> yeah, hey, I mean, whatever helps them, I guess. You know, they're they're making that they're making quite a few things for it now. So, including DC is going to go ahead and have two Jokers because why not? Uh this is why they're. They're calling their whole deal the worlds of DC now, so they can do this. They can do this kind of thing. Uh, there is going to be a Joker movie still with, um, what's his face? Jared what Leto. Or yeah, Jared other... Leto. Uh, but they are going to do another origin Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix. And there's already pictures of him in the, the makeup and uh, everything else. This is supposed to be a low-budget Joker origin film. Uh, it starts production in September. I like how they're getting the low budget in there. <laughs> I know, right? Like, they had no problem saying that, too. Um, well, it's a $55 million budget, so, you know. I, I don't know. That, that's not a ton. I mean, at least in today's world, but... I mean, Joaquin Phoenix tends to do well with these kind of roles of, like, under, sort of under the radar. Like, you don't expect a lot out of him uh, and then he pulls uh, out I just hope he's going to be rapping that's all, uh, all right, I want yeah. we just need <laughs> the rapping uh, Joker I, you know well, I, well he had the stupid grill that Jared Leto, let, Leto had in Suicide Squad <laughs> I would think not uh, see we're clowning on this pun intended but there, I think there are like three Jokers right now in the Batman comics which is you know like no well, wonder that's it... DC, right? They don't, they don't get their ducks in a row. They just do whatever. So, I mean, and it works for them on the TV side and the movie side. I don't know. I mean, they keep doing their thing, and so far, Wonder Woman's the only one that's been because it it seems to be the only one that has their head on straight as far as what they want to do, and it has a clear path. And when you hear people talk about when you hear the director, you hear Gal Gadot, and you hear all the other people talk about Wonder Woman 1984, it still feels like it has a direction. Whereas the other stuff, you're you're looking at it and you're going, what are they doing? All right, so, I don't know. I don't want to hate on DC. I like some of the characters. I'm not the biggest DC person. You know, well, but, yeah. Like, just... like, like, I mean, this will, this is broaching into the next episode, but... Don't worry, that Aquaman movie, that's going to be real aces. <laughs> God. I just think about Roman Reigns. Or it's... Yeah. <laughs> I see him, so... You know, that's all I think of us. They'll make, they'll make, like, the WWE version, like, the film version, and it'll be him. <laughs> yeah. Why, why not? Why not? Someone think left for WWE to do with Roman. Let's, let's just do it. Uh, I mean, so, this year is always wet to begin with anyway, so why not? <laughs> it's true, he just come. he's ready, he's, he's ready to be on the wire, let's do it. Ho- hopefully Triple H can be his father. <laughs> oh, God, that'd be like Vince is showing up and being the, the king or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, I know you're not big of an anime person, but I thought this was interesting because it's sort of like a, okay... We're not huge, but we're a studio. We make things. And it's not on the level of, like, Square asking for money, but it's, like, I don't know what would be underneath that. Um, Studio Trigger, (laughs) the people that make Kill a Kill, Little Witch Academia, and some other, you know, they were partnered with um, A1 to do uh, Darling the Franks that was 
just ended during the the spring season. They basically started their own Patreon. And you don't really get anything from the Patreon aside from, oh, I get put into like a raffle and you might get a drawing and whatever. And the only thing that they say is that we're a studio that strives for global audience and values communication with our fans. Basically, we just want to have money so that if we want to make merchandise or we want to give our crew some extra money or whatever, we'll use your money for that. And yeah. At least they're being honest. <laughs> I mean, at least they're being honest, but it's like, you're a studio that makes some memorable anime. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> If you're not making enough money to make your stuff, maybe there's something wrong with what you're doing? I don't know. I just think that that's weird, that a studio like that's deciding, we're just going to make our own Patreon. You yeah, think that like that's going to happen eventually? Like, you're going to see more studios do this? Or... I mean, I... It's, it's snacks of desperation, but... Like you said, Square's been doing it for the past few years, so why not? Speaking of desperation, we're still talking about Toys R Us getting rebooted. So, they're not going to let this die, which I, I get it in a way. It's got a name well, that people recognize. but People, I mean, I think there are a few Toys R Us that are still around. Like, well, I saw a picture of one. No, this was, like, in America. Like, I saw, like, one in, like, a mall. It was weird. Um... People need, like, kids need toy stores. Uh, the problem with toys for us is, you know, the financing blew them out of the water. But, yeah. I mean, so, the guy that was the one that uh, kept the Canadian Toys R Us stores alive, uh, Jerry Storch, and apparently Toys R Us was up in $1 billion of revenue while he was still around. Uh, when he left, that's when all the bad stuff happened, according to, you know, his, you know, tale of the story and all that. Yeah. Um, he basically is going to go into, try to go to the bankruptcy auction and win the Toys R Us RP, IP, and then he's going to try to reboot Toys R Us. And also, he's obviously trying to get funding to retain some of the store locations and no Toys R Us and Babies R Us. Th- so. Those stores aren't those stores aren't gonna get rented out anytime soon. <laughs> uh probably not, you know. I mean it took him a while just to rent the the where my Kmart was to make it become a Lowe's. So I See, doubt you, that they're just You say that down there, but all the Kmarts up here are just empty. You know, they're just sitting there. And Well that's what I'm saying, like Retail I mean, stores I, are not something people just want to jump on right now. Yeah, but like there was a comment, or not a comment. There's a Kmart uh, in my old town that's been there, been abandoned for like 15 years, and it's like they find. I think they're finally starting to like just tear it down. I'm like, what? What took you so long? Yeah, like, really. <laughs> like, come on now. <laughs> so, uh, released obviously this week. Far Cry 5 Lost on Mars, which if you don't have the um, season pass, just do yourself a favor and don't buy it. Yep, just like the Uh, first Far Cry 4, Far Cry 5 DLC too. (laughs) uh, Sonic Sonic Mania Plus, which if you don't have the original Sonic Mania, do buy this. It's well worth your time. Yeah, I want that. (laughs) Uh, If you have the original Sonic Mania like I do, you can just pay a little bit of money and just uh, upgrade uh, Mother Gunship, which I've heard is okay. Uh, Pool Panic, which I talked about already. Uh, the, adv- the newest Adventure Time game, Pirates of Incredon, is out as well. Uh, the Moose Man, which we have a review. I probably will be posted by the time you listen to this. And an interesting game, which is like uh, Frost, which is a survival card game uh, made by uh, Digerati. So I'll be interested Shoot. to see you. Boy, two great things mashed into one, huh? Yeah, it's, it's a weird uh, setup for that, but yeah. So uh, this is uh, 
episode 190. We'll be doing episode 191, talking about STCC and everything else. Um, if you like what you heard, subscribe. Video games to the max. Uh, subscribe to the whole W2 Network. You get everything we do. Go visit W2Net.com. And uh, we'll see you later, everybody. Later.